The views of the guest are that of the guests and do not represent nor reflect the views and opinions of the Lockout Men channel, the recruiter call channel, nor its host. This site content is for entertainment, educational, and informational purposes only. What's going on, YouTube? This your boy Life with Jay. Checking in, checking in with a video. And uh, today, we are going to uh, <laughs> make a trucking video. And we, so we're going to be a trucker named Jay today, man. I'm going to go back to being a trucker named Jay today. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Today's episode is sponsored by The Ridge Wallet. More on them later. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel where we keep our ear to the streets. Thank you for listening. And in today's episode, we're going back into time to the late trucker named Jay, an OG YouTuber from the golden era of YouTube truckers. Jay shares his journey and earnings with then trucking company VL Trucking. Before it was controversial company Super Eagle, there was VL Trucking. Jay offering a detailed breakdown of his then 2021 income, as well as insights on achieving success as a fleet owner with VL Trucking. This is the story of a trucker named Jay. May my guy rest very well. I just wish that we had the chance to get together and had that conversation we was planning on having. May he rest well. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy. So we're going to be a trucker named Jay today, man. We're about to be in a trucker named Jay today. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I feel like my best quality about my situation at VL has been my transparency and my open being open about my situation. I think that's been my biggest recruiting tool and, and the biggest reason why the public opinion from my people who watch me and, 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 and have come to VL is so strong. It, 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 I don't take for granted longevity anymore. I used to take that for granted. I used to hop around a lot. I used to make like decisions that were based upon emotional and impulsive origin and so it would cause me to again like have a bunch of different situations going on blah 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 and uh, all that changed when i got to vl you know what i'm saying i started to think more long term with my decisions and, and things of that nature so what i want to do in this video and this is the only time i'm going to do it I, I did it last year i'm, I'm going to do it this year because i'm a fleet owner and i want to give an open perspective of, of realistic expectations of what you should be looking to make as a fleet owner and and then that'll be it this won't be an every year thing this won't be an every month thing this is just to to show to say that i did it to kind of end put it put a put a put a bow on being a leasing fleet owner for me and my transition from company driver to fleet owner with the same company so this video won't get deleted it'll just be here for future people who may come to VL or consider VL or people who just want to know the, what you should expect as a fleet owner, you know what I'm saying, as far as money. So without further ado, I want to give you my numbers that I have estimated for what I have made in the year 2021 as a fleet owner for, I had one truck for the entire year. I had three trucks for pretty much eight months out of the year. And yeah, so here we go. Now I will say, listen, I'm not here to prove none to nobody. I'm not here to go back and forth for nobody. So if anybody think I'm lying, then that's just your opinion and I'm cool. I made my peace with other people's opinions when it comes to my income. I really don't care. And this Again, this is for people who are just genuinely interested in what you can make as a lease operator at VL, as a fleet owner at VL, or as a fleet owner in general who leases trucks. I don't think that I make the most. I don't think that my shit is any better than anybody else's. I know that it's probably plenty of people who make more than me, but at the end of the day, I'm happy with my situation. This is a rough estimate of what I've done based upon my bank statements and my settlements. Really what I did for the fuel, I guesstimated because I won't finna go look through every single. So the fuel, my fuel probably will be off. I kind of probably give it down. It's probably be more. And then I, I'm not, I didn't go super specific just because I'm not about to give you guys a, a breakdown of my taxes and all that up here. I'm just not going to do that. I, I think I, I've been transparent enough. And even with this video, it's going to be as transparent as it can be. So let's start with the number that everyone likes to use to manipulate their recruiting numbers. 
the gross. After it's all said and done, rough estimate, I grossed around with three trucks, $555,000 for the year. Now, take into consideration that I was only physically in the truck this whole year, maybe a month and a half. I took the entire month of January off for the birth of my second son, got back in the truck in February. By the middle of March, I was out of the truck for good. I was out of, like, I just never got back in the truck after that. That wasn't the original intention, but between other things happening and then my health taking a turn for the worse at that time and just other many things going on, it just didn't make sense to get back in the truck and go back over the road for me. It just didn't. Now, had I had stayed in the truck, I do believe that I would have made more money because I don't, wouldn't have to pay nobody. Hey. <laughs> And one of the things about my situation is that I pay my drivers, I feel very well. I don't, I feel like I pay them above what I, I, I needed to pay. I probably could have paid them less, but my thing was I wanted to create a situation to where not only drivers would want to stay, but that they could actually grow with. And I really wanted, because a lot of us get trucking gigs that really just pay us enough just to pay the bills. And, and that really, what is the purpose in that? For those that want to do better, that want to grow, you should be able to work the job that you got to work for a year, two years, however long, and still be able to work your way towards having your own. I think everybody should have their own. Not everybody wants to have their own, but if you do, you should be somewhere where you can remain consistent and stable for your household, but also work towards your dreams as well. And so I, I kept that in consideration when I thought about what I wanted to pay my drivers, which is why most of my drivers now are making 75 cents a mile, and that'll probably go up next year just to stay competitive with everyone else, including VL, because of course my trucks are getting older and VL can continuously bring in new trucks for company drivers. So I have to keep my pay competitive to a point where they don't mind riding in this little older, this truck that's a little older than what's on the yard. So. And also that, again, that like when I look at my drivers, the six drivers that I hired this year, four of them went on to get their own trucks. And that's kind of, well, yeah, because there's anything, one, two, yeah. Well, the, the guy that's in the truck now, he's transitioning out in next month. So he's going to get his own truck. Once he leaves, that'll be four drivers who have come work for me and then have transitioned to get their own trucks with a lease truck or by third party and i'm proud of that that's cool man that's nice to know that i was a stepping stone for somebody to go on to do better i'm not gonna be like that guy that's like nah i don't want you to move on i would like if they stayed a little longer which is something that i'm adding to my contract next year requiring drivers to give me six months before they can go on at least a truck at vl just to give me some time to benefit from you especially if i'm giving you an opportunity to work towards your goals, like let's kind of meet halfway here. Give me a little something and then I'll make sure you're straight when it comes time for you uh, to transition on to your lease truck. But uh, besides that, man, I, I have no problem with guys moving on and doing better. And, and I'm glad that they have that they was able to do that. And I'm glad that the guys are still with me are still happy uh, with their pay and, and then the freedom that they have to, to run the way they want without me breathing down their neck. So yeah, so $555,000 is a rough estimate of my gross that is before truck payments that is before fuel now the way i did fuel i did for my one truck that i had all year i calculated just 40 weeks at a thousand dollars a week which is unrealistic i'm pretty sure well sure i'm spending more than that in fuel but i didn't want to go through every single statement and just so i just averaged it at a thousand dollars for the the two trucks that i got in april i did 30 weeks a thousand dollars so forty thousand and sixty thousand hundred thousand dollars in fuel is what i calculated that might be wrong i don't know i'm not a cpa i'm not gonna try to act like i am i'm just trying to give a rough estimate and, and give people some type of room to see what you can make so after paying for truck payments fuel maintenance and paying my drivers out of that five hundred and fifty five thousand dollars i live rough estimate i took home about hundred and thirty two thousand dollars take home rough estimate who knows might be, might be less because the hundred and thirty two thousand that's not even including a lot of miscellaneous stuff that was purchased hotel rooms plane tickets so some of the maintenance that i paid for i paid out of pocket instead of letting vl pay it and then i paid them back what else i'm trying to think it's it's a lot of stuff that still has to be calculated as far as write-offs and stuff in that hundred and thirty two thousand so that'll come down some as well so i'll probably who knows what i'll end up paying taxes on i'm not gonna get into the details of that up here but i'm not afraid of it either a lot of people they don't want to talk about the taxes because they so like bro like it's not that big of a deal bro like if you don't have the full amount to pay the people just put a payment towards it 
and make payments. It's that simple. The IRS is not, like I'm paying on taxes now from 2014 and 2017, like state taxes that they came after me for. I said, look, I'll give you $520 a month for this amount of months. And they say, cool. And that's what I do. Every, every, I think it's the second week or third week of the month, they take $500 out of my bank account for my taxes and everybody's happy. Yay, taxes is not that, you know, it's not something I'm afraid of because it's not something, I'm not hiding anything. You out here trying to do some dirty shit then, but whatever. Let me take a swig of water. Like my mouth getting dry. Y'all be complaining about my drama. $132,000 take home. What I'll say, also remember, out of that $555,000, that is before VL's 20%. So I had to go back when I when I did the calculations, I had to add the 20% back because I wanted to get the full gross so that people had an idea. So I, so I had to go add all the, because originally it was like three something, or was it four something, I don't know. But I had to go back and add the fuel. I had, because I, I when I started, I started with my bank statements. And then I realized, okay, well my bank statements don't include the fuel and my bank statements don't include the maintenance that I spent and the bank statements doesn't include the 20% that VL took out. So I just added 20%. Hold on. What's going on, guys? I just want to stop the video right here, right quick. If you guys made it this far into the video and you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that like button for me, bro. Hit that like button. It's free. It's free. If you made it this far into the video, man, make sure you hit that like button. It's right up under the video, man. And if you guys like more content like this, consider, okay? Y'all got two options. Well, one, but two options. You can either subscribe for the channel for more. And if you really want to rock with me and get the videos early, make sure you join. Join the channel. All right. Shout outs to all my members of the channel that rocks with your man. Thank you very much. Now let's get back to the show. I, I did a rough estimate of how much I feel like I spent in maintenance. I just did forty thousand. I feel like I probably spent more than that because it was a period of time where, oh my God, I was I was like fifteen. I had like fifteen thousand dollars. I had to spend that like in a five week period alone. And then it was another period. Yeah, it's probably more than that. But I just did forty, and then I added a few. Like I said, forty thousand for the one truck, and then thirty thousand for the other two trucks. So it's all rough estimates. This is again, this is not number by number. I'm not gonna do all that. I just wanted to give a rough estimate of what I feel like I made this year. And I, I think I got one more check, but I think I'm just gonna break even on that check anyways. So maybe add another. Who cares? Whatever. It's a rough estimate. So, so you wanna add another five thousand dollars to that? Cool. So one around one, let's say 140. There you go. $140,000 take home is, is the rough estimate. But before I add all the other things that I purchased over the course of this year, write-offs and whatnot. And then, yeah, $555,000, man. I think when I divide that by three, it's like 170 something per truck. Gross. To me, I ain't mad at that. When I consider that them trucks, two of those trucks, ran for eight months. And it really won't even a full eight months because drivers take time off. So every... Three weeks a driver was taken off for five days. Some drivers rode for four weeks. So every four weeks they was taken off for a full week. So it might not even that's not even really probably a full eight months of running. That might be more closer to like really six and a half. Yeah, it might be yeah. But again, this is a rough estimate. So I got those extra two trucks in April of twenty twenty one and, and here's December. So and then I had the other truck. That was the original truck that I was in that I got out of. So I had that all year. So I did the calculations for that for forty weeks because I feel like 12 months, if if that driver, if that truck ran every four weeks, took a week off, there you go, that's 12 weeks off in a year, 40 weeks left, there you go, 40 weeks times an average of $1,000 in fuel, which like I said, I'm pretty sure that average of fuel is way more, but when you calculate fuel, when the drivers go home, so who knows, man? Like I said, I'm just I was just trying to do the best I can to give a rough estimate. So that's what that's what we're looking like. Some people might think that's a lot of money. Some people may think that it's not a lot of money. The way I look at it, man, I got I look at the big picture of my situation. I barely worked this year, whether I wanted to I, I, or not. And I, so for me to have not worked and to been able to run these trucks the way I ran them and pay the drivers the amount that I'm able to pay them and still make that, I don't got no complaints. I really don't. I did a lot this year. I accomplished a lot, paid off a lot of debt, back taxes, evictions. I got my family comfortable in a situation. 
and I expanded my business. I learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes, learned from the mistakes, got better. And I just, I can't, I can't knock that. Like, so that's why I tell people when I, when I talk about VL, I understand that you, know, you got the rumors and the rumblings and this and that. Hey man, listen, I'm not out here with a gun in nobody head telling you to do nothing. I'm just, I just tell people like if you, cause again, my biggest thing is you remember I started with that when I walked in the door in 2020 of June. I ain't had nothing. I was actually in the hole. I mean, so that first six months from June of 2020 until the end of 2020, I made 70 grand. I grew 70 grand. You know what I'm saying so, and then turned around this year and did what I did. And I won't. I never was a hard runner like that whole. So it's probably money left on the table, honestly. Cause I know if I'd have been in the truck more this year, oh my goodness. And some of my drivers, they don't run the hardest every single week, but they don't have to. And that's what I tell people, man. People have different expectations of pay that they need. Some people need over $150,000. So this might not be a good situation for them. Some people only need like $30,000. So this would be like living like a king to them. So it's just all about figuring out what's best for you and what's best for your situation. And if it's enough money for you, then make it work and, and mind your business and do your thing. If it's not, then go find something with more money, man. Go do something with more money. But to those that know how to make a situation work and that's going to make it work regardless, VL is not a bad place to come, man. VL is not a bad place to come in 2022. I'm saying I understand the market. It goes up. It goes down. You never know what it's going to do. But when you look at a situation that you can walk in the door with no to little money up front and if very worst case scenario, you have to spend $5,000 to walk away from like if i had to walk away from all three of my trucks right now fifteen thousand dollars subtract that from the hundred and forty thousand dollars that's still a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars that i made off of zero dollars to start with so i'm up one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars i'm saying now if i wanted to play the game with trucking i could be like oh i made a half a million dollars which technically i did but come on man. i mean i think we, we got to be past that that whole using your gross to sell it like we got to chill with that shit. like come on man stop it because that's what people will use against us oh well you you said you made this but you only made that i want to be very clear on what i mean i don't i don't have to lie about my gross and my net and, and, and over over sell my gross to sell anything to anybody like i don't got to do that shit, bro. but i'm still up half a million if you really want to count it. like i went from zero to up half a million technically like on paper but I only kept one third of it and that was this year. Last year, who knows what that did. So, did I take home? I think I took home 70 last year. Not gross. I don't know. I got to go back and look at it. Yeah, I think I took home 70. So, I got to go. Yeah. Yeah, I took home 70 in six months. So, I don't know what I grossed in them six months. I actually would have to go back and do those numbers. Probably could do it off the top of my head right now if I really wanted to. But I don't feel like doing it. Because six months is what? For it. The 20, so, let's say 20 weeks. So, 20 times 1,000 is 20,000 a few. At that, so that's 90. And then 499. So let's say I think when I did the math, 499 times 52 weeks is like 25,000. So you take that 25,000, cut it in half. That's like what is that? Is that 17? Yeah, that is 17. 17,000. So 17,000 plus 20,000 is 37,000. So you add 37,000 to the 70,000. So that's 100 and 107,000. And then I didn't really spend a lot of maintenance last year. Maybe like five grand. So what's that? 112. So I grossed 112 last year in six months. That's just off the top of my head. I don't really know how accurate that is. But let's. So $655,000 in the last 18 months. And I started with zero. You know what I'm saying? You add that 70,000 take on with that 140,000. Was that 21, 10? It's 210, 200,000, $210,000 since I've been at VL. And I started with zero. And that's take home. Of course, you gotta add other miscellaneous stuff that I spent hotels, airplanes, reimbursing people for things, stuff like that. Who knows what that is? But again, I'm not gonna go into the very specific of my taxes, but there you go, man. That's as much, that's as transparent as I get for you guys to list what you should expect from VL. Now, granted, the market has been very good to me. Looking for the perfect wallet? Meet the Ridge Wallet. With thousands of colors and styles, there's a Ridge for everyone. It is designed for everyday use, keeping your essentials organized without the bulk. Whether you prefer the classic look or the bold look, you'll find a Ridge wallet that fits your style. Crafted with durable materials, the Ridge wallet is built to last with its FRID blocking technology, ensures your cards are safe, making it the perfect on-the-go lifestyle. Upgrade from your dad wallet 
to your new everyday carry. Discover the perfect match at bridgewallet.com. Embrace your style, functionality, and security. And don't forget, when you head over to the ridgewallet.com to make your first order, make sure you use my promo code YouTube10. With that, you would get 10% off your first Ridge Wallet. Thank you, Ridge Wallet, for sponsoring today's episode. A lot of the freight that my drivers and I have pulled over the last 18 months have been above $250 to $3 a mile. So how long that lasts, who knows? I don't think that it's going to drop too, too much. I definitely don't think it's going below $2 a mile, but I don't know. You never know what the market going to do. Who knows? The country's still trying to catch up. So as long as the country catching up, I'm going to take advantage of it and, and my, let my trucks make what they're going to make. And, and, and my my biggest objective moving forward is to, even though I've improved drastically, is to continue to get better with the money that I make. Investments, savings, creating other sources of income. Because sometimes you get caught up in the, I, I made some purchases that maybe I should have second guessed, had another conversation about, but we, we human. Everybody, everybody splurge every now and then. So, but overall, I'm proud of my progress. I'm proud of where I come from. I'm proud of where I'm at. And I'm proud of where I could go. We only gonna get better in 2022. We only gonna get better. We already put things into motion to where we can deal with this health stuff and continue to grow the business as well as creating consistency elsewhere with income. So I look forward to the future with me and VL. Shout out to VL for all the love, knowledge, information, and just game that they done put me on to and allowed me to pass on to people. Shout out them for legit being a good situation, man. Like it's like it's so many people who have become and have been here now for over a year. And to me in trucking, that's just I just hadn't seen that before VL. Like people ask, especially with an OTR company. I mean, you see more consistency in local regional gigs than you do with OTR companies. So to see an OTR company, the only other company I've seen people stay this long at really was like Prime, Steven, Swift. And and those, all those people that was there for that long were like trainers and, and fleet owners. So it's nice to be able to replicate that and, and see other people replicate that and actually see people change their lives and become more successful than they were. Like that's definitely a blessing. I'm saying to be able to help people do that and to be a part of that. I'll, I'll never take that for granted. No matter how long it may last, it may last another year, two years, three years, four, eight, five, or it might be over, who knows? But as long as we have been a part of the ride, it has been super dope experience. And, and I'm just blessed for it, man. I'm trying to remain humble as I can with it and, and continue to help as many people as I can with it. If you see me in the trucking groups, you see me all the time. People be asking about lease purchase and this. You'll see me say VL trucking. I try to show them my little situation. I'll DM them, let them know, hey, this is what I got going on. This is what I did. And this is what you can do. And so it works for some people. It don't work for everybody. I mean, but for the ones that it work for, it works really well for them. So, hey, man, that's my sales pitch. Come to VL. If you don't want to be somewhere... When you got the deep, you got the dispatcher all in the videos. <laughs> Come to VL Truck. I'm gone, man. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. A trucker named Jay, man. Man, he had a knack for good conversation and video presence. Every time he popped up on my feed, I was all ears, man. Regardless of his ways before he came back and changed his ways later in life. I was all ears to what he had to say. He he had a he had a good presence for a good conversation. So it was shocking, a total shock and saddened when I found out of his untimely home going. I'm kind of glad that this video popped up in my feed because it brought me back to a time where I remember of how happy he was when he found success with VL Trucking. Guys, I hope you found this video insightful. And for the people that knew a trucker named Jay, definitely leave your thoughts about him in the comments below. May he continue to rest well and our forever condolences continues to go out to his family. Until next time, everybody.